Hi, my name is Miss Yoli, and I want to thank you for joining me for Journey Kids at Home. I am so excited to start a brand new month with you. This month's theme is Off Stage, Drop the Act. When you wear fancy clothes, you can act like a whole different person. Like I could be a rock star or a famous actor. It could be fun to pretend and act like someone you're not. But in real life, you can have integrity when you drop the act. Because when you act, you're pretending to be someone you're not. But when you lead a life of integrity, you choose to be the real you. Integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. It is about more than just telling the truth, it's being truthful in every part of your life. You just act like yourself. You live the way God wants you to live, no matter who you are with or no matter where you're at. That is our big idea for today. Be truthful with your whole life. We will learn more about that later on in the story. For our first activity, we are going to watch the Gibbs family do the Bee Boozle Challenge. For this challenge, they will have 20 jelly beans in front of them. Even though they look the same, 10 of them are gonna be yummy flavors and the other 10 have gross flavors. They will each take a turn picking out a jelly bean to eat but the trick is they won't know what flavor they're getting until they put it in their mouth. It could be tutti fruity, yummy, or it could be stinky socks, ooh. It could be blueberry, or it could be toothpaste, yuck. If your parents were able to buy the supply kits, this, this special box of jelly beans are provided for you. Feel free to play along with the Gibbs family with the instructions on the box. Good luck with the Bee Boozle Challenge, and we would love to hear about the grossest jelly bean you ate on our Journey Kids Facebook page. And even better, if we can see a picture of your face when you were eating it, that would be so cool. Hi, this is me and Indy, and we're playing a game of called Bean Boozled. Bean Boozled. And, and yeah. um, hope I get these ones, because that's dead fish, and I don't like dead fish. Um, and here we go. In case you're wondering why I have a flotation device, I'm just doing this in case it's absolutely disgusting, I fall off. Indy, you can't just keep on rolling until Okay, what is this? <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you. What is it? You're, you're gonna, gonna you're just gonna quit and do it again. Hey, <laughs> butter popcorn for sure. No <laughs> butter popcorn or not gonna tell you. <laughs> hey, I hope I don't get rotten egg. Okay. I think that is rotten egg. Dale. <laughs> This is gonna suck. <laughs> Just eat it. Oh, I'm Just getting my water it. ready. <laughs> Just take it out. Eat it. Is it? Is it rotten egg? Oh, oh my god. Okay. <laughs> you might need a few moments. <laughs> well, back to the show with me. Okay, let's see what I get. Wow, dog food, I guess. Eh, comida perro. Was it dog food? Okay. Done. Okay. Huh, oh, pulse cake, yay. Okay, bye. Shaka shaka. Wow, thanks Gibbs family. You found out the truth behind each of those treats even though they probably weren't what you expected. Let's spend some time learning our verse for this month. The verse is Proverbs 10, 9. Anyone who lives without blame walks safely, but anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. Living without blame has a lot to do with having integrity. And today we will hear a story about three friends who did their very best to live without blame. I think you're going to enjoy it. But before we hear our Bible story, let's stand up and get ready to worship God because He's the one who can help us live with integrity. Let's sing and praise Him together. Before the day I took a breath, you had a plan for my every step.
Oh. Hey. Hello, planet Earth! It's me, Graham, professional astronaut, broadcasting live from outer space. You know, not a lot of people thought I would make it all the way to Saturn, but you know what? They were right. <laughs> it's just a costume. I'm still, I'm still on Earth. I love to dress up and pretend to be other people. Don't you? I mean, I love to dress up in costumes and wear scary makeup or funny masks. It's out of this world <laughs> because I'm an, because I'm an astronaut. Oh, but today. We're talking about what it's like to live our lives without masks, without costumes. What it's like to live with integrity. Now, integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. And it's harder than it sounds to live with integrity. There's so many reasons to pretend to be someone you're not. I mean, you may want people to think you're funny. <laughs> You may want your teachers to think that you're smart. E equals MC squared. The capital of Mongolia is Ulaanbaatar. A woodchuck can chuck 32 cords of wood. And you probably want your friends to think that you're cool. Cool kids still dress like this, right? See what I mean? It isn't always easy to just be true to who you are. In today's story, We'll learn about some guys who were under a lot of pressure to be like everybody else. We'll find out if they were able to stay true to who God made them to be. I'll be back in a moonit. <laughs> Instead of a minute, it's moonit. Because I'm in space. <laughs> Maybe I should dress up as the clown again. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Daniel, chapter one. Daniel was only a very young man when King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon conquered the land of Judah. Nebuchadnezzar made sure that God's people wouldn't rebel by taking Daniel and other young men from royal families in Judah and marching them back to Babylon with him. Will we ever see our home again? Daniel's friends were just as scared and confused as he was. Where will we live? What will he do to us? I sure hope the food is decent. Daniel tried to reassure them as the imposing city gates rose ahead. God will be with us, whatever happens. The king chose the brightest and best young men from Judah and ordered that they receive special training. After three years, you will get to be very important and serve me. The chief official Ashpenaz took charge of Daniel and his friends. <laughs> tut tut, those wishy-washy Hebrew names just won't do. You need new ones. New what? Names. <laughs> Let's see. Daniel will call you Belteshazzar, and you three will be Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> Are those names, or is he just sneezing? You'll learn our language, of course, and all the Babylonian writings. <sighs> Daniel's heart sank as he realized what was happening. The king wanted Daniel and his friends to forget they were God's people. He wanted them to become Babylonians. But Abednego was worried about something else. Hey, I, I'm about to starve. Any way we can get a bite to eat? <laughs> right this way. Ashpenaz led Daniel and his friends to a big table set with mouth-watering foods. Mmm, steak. Or those Babylonian buffalo bites. The cake's got at least nine layers. Only the best straight from the king's table. <sighs> oh, the food smelled delicious. But Daniel pulled his friends aside. Guys, if this food is from the king's table, that means it's been offered to false gods first. Uh-oh, not good. Our new names and training are one thing, but if we eat this food, it's like we're saying we're okay with false gods. But we gotta eat something, man. We can ask for different food, simple stuff that hasn't been offered to the false gods. But that chocolate cake! A bandago? 
Okay, okay. Daniel and his friends turned back to Ashpenaz. They tried to ignore the delicious smells wafting from the table. Uh, this all looks great, but could we eat something that's not from the king's table? It doesn't need to be anything fancy. The king is my master. He's decided what you must eat and drink. What if you don't eat this and he sees you looking worse than the other young men? He might kill me. No matter what Daniel said, Ashpenaz was too fearful to listen. So Daniel approached the guard assigned to take care of them. Please, just test us for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. See how we look then. Hmm. Well, if Brussels sprouts are your thing. For 10 days, the guards gave Daniel and his friends nothing to eat but veggies and water. I could get into the habit of cabbage. I like broccoli, probably. Pa pass the peas, if you please. I just want a hamburger. Let me tell you, it wasn't easy to say no to all those delicious foods the other young men got to eat. But at the end of 10 days, the guard called everybody out. Line him up. He strode past the other young men. Good, good. I can see you've been eating well. When the guard reached Daniel and his friends, he stopped in surprise. What? You've been eating rabbit food, but you look even better fed than the others. <laughs> Daniel smiled. God had helped them grow strong even without eating the food offered to false gods. Okay, fine. You can keep eating veggies and water. Rats. Thank you. God continued to give Daniel and his friends knowledge and understanding as they studied, and at the end of their training, they were brought before the king. Let's see what you know. How many inches in a meter? 39.3701. Hmm, what do you call a group of porcupines? A uh, prickle. If it takes eight men 10 hours to build a wall, how long would it take four men? No time at all, because the wall's already built. Hmm. How are you all so smart? The one true God gives us wisdom. Hmm. Well, we'll see about that. Anyhow, you're 10 times smarter than my other advisors. You get to be very important and serve me. Daniel and his friends eventually became the king's most trusted advisors, and even though they served the king of Babylon, they never stopped standing strong for the one true God in everything they said and did. Okay, so Daniel and his friends were in a really bad situation. They were taken from their homes, and they were forced to be some king's servant. But even then, they chose to be true to themselves. They chose to live the way God wanted them to live. You see that kind of integrity a lot in the Bible. I mean, think of Jesus. He was always true to himself. Jesus could have gone along with the crowd, but instead he lived the way he knew was true, even when it meant giving up his life for you and me. So how can we be true with our lives? Well, it's great if you want people to think that you're fun or funny, but not if it means, say, hurting someone's feelings to get a laugh. I have no idea how to make balloon animals. And being cool is cool, you know? But if you have to pretend to be something that you're not so people think that you're cool, that's not cool. Cool? What's another word for cool? So here's the one thing to remember today. Be truthful with your whole life. You can choose to be who God made you to be. I mean, to be honest and true in what you say and in what you do. Like I said before, it isn't always easy. So ask God for help. That's one small step for you and one giant leap for integrity. <laughs> Goodbye. Daniel and his friends were in a tough situation. They were taken to a faraway land with people who tried to teach them all kinds of new and different things. And those things didn't always fit with what they knew was true about God. Daniel and the others knew something important. They knew what it meant to live with integrity. 
they knew what it meant to be truthful with your whole life. Say that with me. Be truthful with your whole life. Every day, we can choose to live truthfully. That might mean not playing certain video games or watching certain movies that you're not supposed to, even if they look really cool or super popular. It might mean standing up for what's right instead of trying to fit in. Remember, stay true to who you are and stay true to who God wants you to be. Live out what you know is right and you'll never regret it. That leads me to a question I have for you. How can you be true with your life? Can you pause the video and talk this over with your family, please? All right, now let's get into our last activity. It is called veggie sculpting. All you need is Play-Doh and your family. For this activity, I want you to shape the Play-Doh into your favorite vegetable and have your family guess what kind of vegetable it is. I'll show you what I did and see if you can guess it. Here's my vegetable. What do you think it is? You got it. It's a carrot, a pink carrot that is. <laughs> I am so glad that you were able to join me today to start learning all about integrity. Next week, we will be learning that being truthful with God keeps you close to Him. I'll see you then. Bye.